Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, this is the next question in this requirements engineering sample paper walkthrough. So we're going to now look at, look at the, the, the question and see what we can do to answer it. So it says, what would be the impact of not including the source and owner attributes of each requirement in a requirements catalog? Okay, so this particular question, the first thing I can, I can see here is it's just a simple question. Um, it's sort of describing a scenario, but it's not a scenario in the context of this person is doing that and this. This is more asking us about what would, um, what would be the best thing to do in this particular situation. So it says, what would be the impact? So if we in this situation and we are not including a source and owner, so these are the particular items in, a, in the document, the requirements catalog document, what would happen if that would be the case? So very quickly, we can identify that they are talking about the source, the owner, and the requirements catalog. So these are things that we need to know in requirements engineering. We need to know that the requirements catalog is a way of us documenting the requirements. And we need to know that the source and owner attributes are items in that catalog. They are entries in that particular catalog. So what we need to then think about is we need to think about what are these particular items used for. So if we um, go through our requirements engineering course, if we look at module three, um, it's all about documenting the requirements. And in this context, we are documenting the requirements using the requirements catalog. So we have our text-based, we have our diagrammatic um, techniques, our documentation techniques. And in this case, it's one of those text-based um, documentation methods, which you, need, which you should know from your course. And <clears throat> um, what we should also know is that this particular item, the source and owner, are also linked to the requirements engineering framework, and it's the management aspect of requirements engineering. So <clears throat> the source is, what do we know about the source? The source is the originator of the requirement. Usually this is the person who we actually elicited the requirement from, so we spoke to this person, and they said to us, well, we think that this particular system should have this feature. Maybe um, we should be able to uh, uh, maybe store customers' data in the system. That's a requirement. And we got it from uh, maybe a customer service representative. Or we may, be, um, we may have elicited something else, maybe from a system that is going to be used in a host uh, maybe a hospital. So all of the different hospital staff are going to be using the system to track the, um, the patients in the hospital. And maybe one of these items is to look up their medical records, and maybe that's a requirement. They say um, the system we need to access, the, or the system uh, should, ac should be able to access a customer's medical records. Okay, so these are particular requirements, and we would then, in this requirements catalog, so maybe one of those pages, which has got all the information from the requirement, if you think of a catalog, it's almost like a book, and it would have all of that information about each requirement. Um, we then, the source is the originator. So it's the person, that first person we got the requirement from. If we took it from this um, the system where it is storing the customer's details or something, it may have been someone maybe on the sales floor that may, may have said that, yes, we need, we, we often, when we uh, make a sale, we then enter the customer's details into the system. So that particular person who gave you that requirement or that team, you need to put it in that, that field there so that we know where it came from. Um, because often what, what happens is that further along in the process, the development process, and as we're building the system, or even before that, as we're getting to a point of refining our requirements, maybe we might need to be able to trace back to that requirement and trace back to that um, particular stakeholder who we elicited that requirement from. And that's the source. We need to, might need to go back to them and sort of resolve conflicts, maybe conflicts with the requirements themselves. Maybe there's an issue with it and we need to go back to the person and say, is this really what you meant? Did you mean that we store customers' data? 
or how do we store the customer's data? You haven't actually given us that information. So we need to be able to track back to that particular person who gave us that requirement. So we may need to get more information from it, uh, from them. Or we may need to uh, trace back to them so that they can validate that requirement. They can say that this is, this is a real requirement. There are no conflicts here. And sometimes we also need to resolve particular uh, conflicts. So there will be conflicts between stakeholders. You may elicit some requirements from one group of people and they tell you one particular thing. One, you elicit one or two requirements from those. Then you elicit some requirements from another group of people and they tell you what their requirements for the system is. But then if you say to them, oh, there was once this particular requirement that was sort of linked to that, I don't know if it's going to work with what you're saying here, then we need to trace back to that person to and, and maybe bring them into a sort of conflict resolution process and uh, negotiate through this particular requirement to see which one of these two people is correct about the particular feature of the system. So uh, that is the originator, the source attribute, that field, that, that, that line where you write in who was the person that gave you this requirement, that is the source in the requirements catalog. And um, the, the source can also be a document. So if we may have elicited requirements through documents analysis, we've been looking through some documents and we've defined that the new system needs to have the same uh, features from some old system that we may have looked through some documentation, we may need to write that particular document down too because then you may have gone through multiple texts and multiple documents uh, to, to find that requirement. You may even have to put in the page number of that particular document. So you can go back to where you found it and say, this is where I found it. Is this really true? Is this requirement um, clear? Okay, so the owner is another field in the requirements catalog on one of those pages that has got all the information about the requirement and the owner is the person who we've defined to be the decision maker about the requirement we need someone who has the authority or the responsibility over that particular requirement and maybe there's a particular department a team leader or some other authority that is making a decision on that requirement because it's usually not left to just one person we need to be able to trace back to that owner and say, look, we've got this requirement here. We need to make a decision on it. And please, can you tell us um, how to do that or what to do in this situation? So in this whole documentation, this lesson on documentation in module three, it's connected to um, the lessons on, on requirements management. Because as we know, management is about management and traceability. And in terms of traceability, we need to trace back to the um, source of the requirement. So we have the requirements and we have the features and we have that forwards to, so from the requirements to the features. And then we have backwards from, so we need to trace from the features back to the re requirements itself. That's traceability. And we need to have maybe some version control in there, some configuration management. And this is all about uh, managing the requirements and in order to manage the requirements effectively, we need to have information such as the source and owner in our requirements catalog. Okay, so um, the backwards from uh, traceability in requirements management is all about asking the question, where did this requirement come from? And we need to re uh, clarify these requirements when there's conflict, conflicting views about the requirement or the requirement itself. Okay, so if we look at these answers here, now that we know what this is asking us about, it says A, the requirement would no longer be atomic. Okay, all right, so this is in the context, this is really outside the context of documentation and even requirements management. This is about requirements analysis they ask, they're talking about here. So we know that requirements all need to be atomic. They need to be individual requirements that are not um, maybe linked to, not linked to, but but that cross over to other requirements. So if we have a requirement that says uh, the system needs to do A, B, and C, we need to have these single individual requirements that allow the developers to understand clearly what the system needs to do. 
each of these requirements needs to, needs to be atomic. It needs to say, the system needs to be able to process this data. The system must be able to do this. The system must be able to do this. It mustn't be this uh, two uh, two pieces of information in one requirement. And we we process this in our requirements analysis phase of requirements engineering. We apply filters, we prioritize, and within those filters, we have to analyze these requirements to make them atomic. Okay, so B, the requirements would be more difficult to prioritize. Once again, this is more inclined to, along the lines of requirements analysis. We prioritize requirements in requirements analysis, but this um, having the source and owner attributes has got nothing to do with prioritization. In terms of prioritization, we'd have to just pr prioritize the requirements themselves to define which um, are the are the most important features of the system to go into development first. Maybe in an agile context, it would be the user stories. If we selected that group of, of features, and that's going to go into this first iteration of development. Okay, so C, the requirements would be difficult to trace. So immediately from what we've been discussing, we can see that this is the correct answer here. It's all about traceability. Knowing about the source and the owner attributes and the requirements catalog is all about traceability. It's about looking back to who or where this requirement came from. Then D says the requirements would no longer be specific. So this again is more inclined to be along the lines of requirements analysis. It's talking about some, uh, you know, being th them being specific requirements. They need to be clear and un unambiguous um, and concise and they need to be specific, but this is all through the requirements analysis process that we have these specific individual atomic requirements, no duplicates, uh, nothing un unambiguous, clear, concise, etc., etc. So very clearly the answer here is C, the requirements would be difficult to trace. Okay, keep on studying, keep on writing down your notes in your course, Remember that this, this uh, exam is not easy. You need to do prepare enough to be able to pass. Um, aim for a really high mark if you can. Aim for 80, 90, 100% um, and try to achieve your best. And set aside enough study time for this and, and don't just book your exam prematurely. Ensure that you go through everything. Only when you are extremely confident about this, when you know how to answer these questions, such as in the context that I'm talking to you now, that you really know your stuff, only then will you pass with fly flying colors. If you feel that you know a little bit about it, or you feel like you think you, knowing, you, you know about requirements engineering, and you feel like you've covered the syllabus, that doesn't feel right. You should feel like you're 100% confident to pass the exam, and only then will you pass it. So just be careful. Um, the, the exam is not easy. Ensure that you do enough revision, enough practice, so that you understand everything. And understand the big picture first. Understand what requirements engineering is about. And then once you understand the context, you start placing all of these uh, concepts into, um, you know, into, into what else you're learning. And investigation techniques or elicitation, analysis. You, once you have a context, you have an idea of how it all takes place and what you're doing. You know that requirements engineering is one part of BA work. It's all about the, um, you know, we've got to a stage where we've done all the, the business case work and all that other stuff, analyzing strategies and defining the the um, the target state. This is a point where we now want some documentation to give to a developer. We want to maybe give them the the BRD or the um, the user story backlog. We want to give them this whole list of requirements and this all this documentation so that the developers know how to build the system. This is where the real skill and the real, this where this knowledge can really benefit you. And this is a key part of what you're going to be doing as a business analyst. So you need to understand what you're doing here. And then all those details, fill in the gaps afterwards. And then once you've got that Ensure that you do enough revision and memorizing. Mem memorize where all of these things go. Place them in categories in, inside your mind. Put them into these different categories and, and all these different techniques so that you can then understand how they all um, link together and how, would, how you would use them in a particular situation, like in um, 
in these questions, which they're actually testing you on. So I hope you've uh, got something out of this. Just keep on studying, um, aim high, and then I'm sure you'll be you'll be great. So I'll see you in the next question. Goodbye.